after you pull over so that you're not pushing buttons and driving at the same time, which is illegal. Ms. Castaw, do not get hit by a car down there. Which is illegal. Y'all getting so comfortable with this Zoom court. I mean, people just get so comfortable with this Zoom court. They said we could go to court in any which way, so ever we choose. I'm going to find out how I could cancel all my Zoom hearings. Counsel, like, no, judge, don't do it because I'll. All right. <laughs> Um, after you pull over so that you're not pushing buttons and driving at the same time, which is illegal, which is illegal. Y'all getting so comfortable with this Zoom court. I mean, people just get so comfortable with this Zoom court. They said we could go to court in any which way, so ever we choose. I'm going to find out how I could cancel all my Zoom hearings. Counsel, like, no, judge, don't do it, because I'll... All right, I'm, I'm on... I'm not going to argue with you, Your Honor, um, but I am outside the Waterford Court, because I have a hearing. Right, that, uh, look, it's so com it is convenient, it is so convenient. Many ways, <laughs> in so many ways, but sometimes people mess it up. I'm going to send you and your client to break our room number 15. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. <clears throat> 15 minutes later... And according to the report, Mr. Na Mr. Navarre's license is suspended. According to the report, his license is suspended. According to the report, his license is suspended. But he came on the Zoom driving the motor vehicle. So My license. no, sir, absolutely not. Everybody got their turn. And now it's definitely my turn to speak. Shut up! I don't want to hear your lie. So, as I indicated, that's why I asked, is there anything anybody want to say? Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to the report? Right? And so, if you're going to talk, I'm going to let you finish talking. I'm going to let y'all finish talking. I don't even know what else to do. Okay, so I said, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to the report? That's the opportunity to say on page uh, four, three, it says that the license is suspended, but his license is not suspended. My license is not suspended. So all I'm saying is dr drive without a valid license here. So as far as I'm concerned, there's a violation already before we can get out the gate. So if the license is suspended, um, that's a problem for me. All right. So um, the court is going to accept the recommendation from probation for a 12-month probationary period with a final review date of, uh, this is 2004. <laughs> I need you all to stop talking. I am talking and I am literally sentencing Mr. Navarre. If we need a break, then somebody asked me for a break. But what I'm not going to do is talk while you're talking. Your Honor, I, I was just signaling for Mr. Navarre to not speak. And I was going to ask the court when you did take a moment to breathe for a quick break. Uh, I do believe his license is valid as of Friday, and I did miss that on the third page. Well, he wasn't listening to you when you was telling him not to speak because he keeps talking. So as I said, if his license is suspended, then this a, it's a violation. Um, 
The court is going to impose a 12 month probationary period with the final review date of February the 5th of 2025. He is, of course, eligible for early discharge after six months. Court is going to give a six month review date. Whoops. For August the 6th. Oh, no, that's not a good date. I, re I know. August the the uh, 13th, 2024, at which time he will be eligible for early discharge if he has completed the terms and conditions of his probation. The court is going to impose $210 mandatory costs. And then this was a whole lot on this precinct report. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know why I needed to know about all of this stuff over here because it literally, I, I don't even know what his blood alcohol was because it was so much about the test, the test that he was given. Um, he didn't have alcohol in his system. So, um, um, I think I saw uh, where on page, I don't know what page number this is because it's not even numbered, but it's it's the police description of the offense and it's, um, it's the third page of the long scenario. And so um, it talks about the lab results and in the lab results, um, it indicates that he refused the PBT, and then he, I, I, I'm supposing they did a, 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 a blood draw, because this is a lot, and then he had in his system um, benzos, cocaine, and hydrocodone, uh, which uh, says to me that he might need drug treatment court. Right. But um, since it is his first offense and since he again, you know, all right. I know this is a new probation officer um, on page seven. It said that he had submitted to your analysis and everything was negative. So therefore. Um, I was I'm not going to send him to drug court at this time, uh, looking at the recommendations from probation however again i was confused by the recommendation and the fact that he did not test positive for alcohol but he tested positive for drugs so I, i'm confused um by the recommendation so miss ritter was there any agreement that he would perform an alcohol sentence or is that you didn't say anything about the recommendation either you no, know, Judge, and I do apologize, but um, there was a plea agreement for because of the underlying offense. The people did um, want there to be a drug treatment evaluation and treatment if necessary, but not the alcohol, not the alcohol stuff that they recommended. Correct? Not at all, Judge. Okay, so the court is going to um, impose a four hundred dollar fine, no restitution. <laughs> supervision of $420 for 12 months, which is at a rate of $35 per month. So if there is um, an early discharge, of course, that will be prorated. At the time, the court imposes a $100 pre-sentence investigation fee. Mr. Um, Navarro will submit to your analysis twice a month for 12 months. That's a total of at a rate of $10. Um, Per test, that's a total of two hundred and forty dollars for a grand total of one thousand three hundred and seventy dollars, um, of which nine hundred and forty dollars has to be paid in order for him to get discharged at the halfway point. Additionally, you shall not use or possess any illegal substances. 
You shall not use or possess any marijuana without a valid medical marijuana card. You shall not use or possess any opiates without a, a valid prescription and letter of explanation from the doctor. You shall not drive without a valid driver's license. You shall <clears throat> attend outpatient treatment. And if any positive test, the court is going to uh, consider a referral to sobriety court, drug treatment court. You will um, complete the choices program through eBay. And pay any outstanding tickets you have with 36 district court provide proof of your education or uh, participate in an adult education GED program. Court is going to, um, as I indicate, set the um, review hearing for August the 13th at 10 o'clock a.m. We will mail a copy of this report to the M. Emons Avenue address and probation will contact you at the phone number ending in 3196. And if I didn't say the first part of the sentencing, of course, you shall not violate any criminal law of any governmental unit. That means no new cases. You cannot leave the state of Michigan without the consent of the court. You must make a truthful report to probation on a monthly basis and you must notify probation immediately of any change of address, phone number or employment status. Anything further with respect to this matter? Not from the people, Judge, thank you. Just wanna clarify, you told them to participate in a GED program? No, I said provide proof of education. Okay. Participate in an adult education GED okay. program. Thank you. Yeah. Nothing further. Call, call Ms. Lyles back, call Ms. Lyles back. Call Miss Lyles back, Mr. Flanagan. Thank you so much. All right, then we're all set. Have a great day and stay safe. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. So um, tell docket management that I am going to have a jury trial date that week. So they're either going to summons in more jurors on the 15th or they're gonna have to summons in jurors one of those Tigers games. Which do they prefer? Because I'm going to have a jury trial that week. And that's not the answer. Mr. Mr. Navin left a memo. Can they consult the memo that he left about which dates to use for the jury trial that week? I'm going to have a jury trial that week. I'm not giving up a jury trial week for the Tigers. What happened to the jail? What happened to the jail? Where's where Mr. Oliver? Oh, there he is. Okay. All right, I'm ready on Oliver. This is case number 08602970. The people of the state of Michigan versus Marcel Ramon Oliver. Defendant is charged with retail fraud. It's on the court's docket for a review. Uh, a who is that at the table doing? What is going on at my table? Okay, I need. Okay, bless the shirt. Okay, um, appearance, please. Can counsel stop doing that at the table on the screen? Can can we can we acknowledge that we're in court? Can we do that? Okay, appearance, please. Rikidia Hall on behalf of Marcel oh, Oliver. Table, can council move from the table? It's very distracting. It's very distracting. Can council move from the table? Okay, your appearance, Ms. Hall. Rikidia Hall on behalf of Marcel Oliver. Sir, may you unmute yourself and state your full name for the record? Unmute the record. Unmute, unmute, Mr. Oliver. Well, Mr. Oliver, you, you certainly can unmute because you had to unmute in the breakout room. Someone had to unmute you. Someone had to unmute you. 
Okay, so then all you had to do is tell them to unmute you, Mr. Oliver. They in another room. I got to go out of here. They're in another room. Let me go. Don't have They're to go out, here. Mr. Oliver, because clearly Mr. Oliver. you can tell that I can hear you because I'm talking to you. Okay, well, yeah, they, they're not in this room with me. They're not in this room. They're in conversation. We're literally having a conversation. Mr. Oliver, please state your name. Marcel Ramon Oliver. Thank you so much. Today is the date. This Hello? is what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do this. I'm you not. can't hear me. They say it's, it's not mute. You hear me? They unmuted. Can you unmute it? What just happened? All right. Let's go to another case. And then we'll come back to that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's go. <laughs> let's go to... Um, <laughs> I know, I know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mr. Oliver, here's something we're gonna do. Mr. Oliver, you're you're not gonna just randomly talk. That that's what's gonna happen. You're not gonna just randomly talk. We are literally in court. We are in a court proceeding. My court reporter is recording. And you're not gonna just literally start talking, nor are you gonna get up and answer telephones while the judge is talking. I mean, I don't care who's calling inside of that room. I literally don't care. They're gonna not call inside the room because the person who called inside the room, they knew we were on court because that's why they unmuted you when I asked you to unmute, like literally. So what we're gonna do is make sure that we are abiding by court decorum at the jail. Now, I don't know which jail facility you're in, but I'm going to need you to abide by court decorum and I'm going to need the people monitoring to abide by court decorum. All right. So, Miss Hall, I think in the middle of all that, you had placed your appearance on the record. We had gotten Mr. Oliver's name. And then today is the date set for review. And um, they tell them to leave us alone, Mr. Flanagan. To just tell them that I said, leave us alone. We, we don't need that. We don't even, we don't need it. Just tell them to leave us alone for right now. Okay, today is the day set for review. Um, let me check my email. I did ask Mr. Flanagan to send me a copy of the register of action. Um, because this is a quite, a very old case and Mr. Oliver is clearly in custody of the Michigan Department of Correction, and he was originally sentenced back in 2008 uh, by my colleague whose name I cannot read, uh, so I don't know. Oh, I guess I could go up here and see who the judge was. Nope. Don't it doesn't tell me. So one of my colleagues sentenced him. He was supposed to do 30 days of community service. That's all he was sentenced to do. That was back in uh, 2009. Miss Hall, are you aware of how long he's been in custody of the Michigan Department of Corrections? Yes, Your Honor. He was actually in, well, previously in the custody of Michigan Department of Corrections from 2009 to 2018. And then now he's back in their custody? Yes, he said that he's only been there for a few days. I don't know the um, amount of days for the current time. And he'll pr he'll probably be doing at least another year. All right, then the court is going to um, amend Mr. Oliver's sentence. to give him, this is ridiculous. Mr. Flanagan, you didn't tell, you you must, you didn't give him out. You didn't tell him, can can the can the young lady move out of the, the, the thing? Okay, Mr. no worries, Mr. Flanagan. All right, I'm gonna amend the sentence to 30 days in the Wayne County Jail. 
I'll give him credit for 30 days served. We will close the case out with improvement. Bid Mr. Oliver adieu and good luck. And do you all see how we didn't need them to interrupt the proceedings to give him that remote? Do you literally see how we did not need them to interrupt the proceedings to give him that remote? I promise you, if people let Judge Bryant do her job, I promise you, I promise you court will run much smoother. Ms. Hall, anything else for the record? Nothing else for Mr. Oliver, Your Honor. Thank you. And Mr. Oliver, you have a great day um, and uh, good luck to you. Stay safe. And uh, this case is closed out. We will send the, the paperwork over to the jail, put to the to the prison. All right. <laughs> Easy peasy lemon squeezy.